Hi, my name is Aika. I am a professional metaphysical counselor. However, I am a recent enthusiast in African relations. Africa, the continent, has so much more going on than political shifts and civilian uprising. It even goes into geographical, geographical changes. And this is so exciting that we are living in a time we can witness this. Now, when it comes to the geography and what's going on in the land, we're not going to see Africa actually splitting in two. But that's what's been happening for millions of years. And it continues to do so at a rapid rate as time goes on. Have you heard about Africa splitting? Check this out. Ears, the East Africa, the East African Rift System is the reason for what's going on. You see, Ethiopia has a concentration of tectonic activity. You see, we are witnessing a time that there is so much exciting newness going on in such an ancient land of Africa, and we're not going to be able to see all of it come to fruition in this lifetime. It's still exciting though. This also will have an effect on Africa's ecology, some positive, some negative. So I want to reference a couple of articles that I found interesting here. This is by GreekReporter.com. Africa splits into two to find a new ocean faster than predicted. So cool. The East African Rift, a huge crack in the Earth's surface, is the center of this activity, stretching from Mozambique in the south to the Red Sea in the north. The East African Rift represents the only place on Earth where continental crust is breaking apart eventually to form oceanic crust. It actually splits at about 0.8 centimeters a year. Yeah, 0.8 centimeters. Scientists estimate that the tectonic plates in this region, the East, the African, and Somali plates are pulling away from each other at a rate of 0.8 centimeters a year. This movement is slow to our standards, human standards, but it marks the beginning of a process that could culminate in the creation of a new ocean in a million years, but some theorize it might be half of that time. In Ethiopia's Afar region, the rift spans 60 kilometers and plunges up to 10 meters deep. In 2005, this area demonstrated the risk of volatility when over 420 earthquakes struck in a short period of time. What usually takes centuries to unfold happened in mere days. That means the distance. So Africa is making strides, and this just proves how unpredictable, how predictable, unpredictable the animal earth could really be right um can africa split apart it's happening so it's not splitting apart in half it's just splitting apart it's still super super interesting because i all know by now that they have lied about the size of africa right and it's still going to be a huge land mass that is really even though it's African countries, it could be a whole new world. This, it just, this will be interesting to see how this unfolds. Science, Africa is the most impacted region when it comes to displacement, challenges, and consequences. This is the, the rotten bread and butter of this article that I was reading. Africa is the most impacted region when it comes to displacement, with a larger number of countries affected than any other continent or region. This is such a played out generalization, by the way. I, I'm over. I'm over this. I'm ready to see Africa change the narrative of their own story for themselves. As of 2015, more than 15 million people were internally displaced in Africa, according to the United Nations. As the plate continues to split in the future, this phenomenon will result in the displacement of community settlements and various flora. These challenges will impact their habitats due to climate change, resulting in environmental degradation, rapid urbanization, and increased settlements will put pressure on the natural resources, leading to a scarcity of water, energy, and food. Uncontrolled waste disposal will also be a specific concern. Furthermore, some species will disappear while others will become endangered. Let's stop right here. Let's see who wrote this article. 
Mr. Sharanjit Kumar, Jyoti Kumari. Listen, I really appreciate how informative your article was. I just want to point that out. This old played out idea that African countries are so helpless. Like, we're, you're talking about from 2015 disasters that have happened. We're talking about millions of years in the future. I'm pretty confident that Africans will figure it out. They, that these countries, right, these African countries, will figure out by then how to solve this problem. We have so much time. Getting passionate about Africa relations is really fun when you have pregnancy hormones running wild. Okay, finally, let's talk about some countries that will be affected. Let's talk about the countries that will be affected by this shift. Let's talk about the landlocked nations first. What a coastline this is an for article. landlocked nations mean. Landlocked nations such as Uganda, Uganda, Burundi, and uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, and Zambia would inadvertently find themselves with a coastline and thus build harbors that connect them to the rest of the world directly. The DRC has a tiny sliver of Atlantic coastline, but it remains unused. Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia would have two territories each. Go Ethiopia! When it splits, the smaller portions containing Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, in the eastern parts of Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique, where the valley may where the valley ends may drift away. Okay, so there's parts of Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia that will be split. The DRC, Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi have, by and large, relied on Kenyan's Indian Ocean port of Mombasa and Tanzania's port of Dar es Salaam for their sea freight and transportation. A new coastline just in their front yard would cost the countries millions of dollars in evacuation but it comes with huge advantages. The reduction of international logistic expenses, creation and shipping industries, that did not exist. It means that finally these countries can be directly connected to subsea internet cables if that technology will not have been by, bypassed by then. Okay, I'm gonna rewind back to, this is gonna happen over thousands and millions of years. This problem will be solved, no problem. In fact, I have confidence that Africa, if it keeps going at the rate that it, that it is, is going to be able to be more self-sufficient and this will not be an issue. Millions of dollars, that's nothing. Okay, like uh, in independent Africa will be able to solve these problems and with their vast rich resources by then, what is the concern? We have time. If anything, let me circle back to this. This is so exciting because right now we're witnessing the the change in tone in Africa, thanks again to the Sahel movement and to uh, civilians noticing the grand leadership that's happening in that strip of Africa. And hopefully this trend is infectious. I am praying that it is a self-sufficient, confident Africa and a le with leaders that are prideful in their communities. So I'll leave it here on this. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have not, please follow me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect. It's lonely over there and I could use some help seeing the ropes over there. So let me know. Follow me on any platform that you see this on and check me out. Take care and blessings on your hearts and blessings on your minds. Bye-bye.